All right, Team Chandler and Team McGregor, the ultimate fighter is back, and it's also the end of Conor McGregor's career as we know it, guys. I've been saying it for a while. Conor McGregor needs a win, and he's waking up in silk sheets. The last thing this guy wants to do is wake up at 5 a.m., with his fucking hard hat on. Conor McGregor doesn't want to go to the coal mines. Conor McGregor doesn't want to wake up and get his face dirty and put in hard rounds. Michael Chandler, whether or not he's training to fight Conor McGregor, is getting in the gym and training like an absolute lunatic. You can go to his Instagram. Day in and day out, this guy is training with the most unreal explosive activities you'll ever seen he's on demon time in the gym conor mcgregor is in the gym sparring cardio kickboxing class attendees going to the black forge in smoking big blunts snorting lines filming movies for six months of the year and coming back after yet another long layoff caused by an injury do you guys remember when conor mcgregor lost to dustin poirier in their rematch we had this photo of Connor, like he was elevating his leg, icing it. The guy's leg was destroyed in that fight. And six months later, he fights Dustin again, and his leg snaps like this. Connor McGregor's body is falling apart before our eyes. He is really no different at this point in his career than an old man TJ Dillashaw whose limbs are coming off like he has leprosy. Let's be honest, guys. As much as I love Connor McGregor, this is the matchup that will ruin him. Connor has false confidence, man. As I said, he's not training with killers anymore. He's training with cardio kickboxers. And when he gets in the octagon with Michael Chandler, this is what's going to happen. You're going to see Michael Chandler walking out. Trump saying, hey, you ain't hear that coming. Hey, Trump saying, hey, you ain't hear that coming. Just the epitome of fucking intensity, aggression, coming in on demon time. Like a guy that's locked in, locked and loaded. Training like a savage for the last 15 years non-stop. And Conor McGregor is going to be walking around with that crazy man look. Yeah. And then he's going to get in the octagon and say, come here. And he, he's going to get knocked the fuck out, dude. He's going to have his leg break, right? He's going to get pressured up against the fence. He's going to land one good shot. Everyone's going to go crazy. And Michael Chandler's just going to blitz him and bam, overhand right. Done. Great. We saw Connor come back, and now he's not going to come back for a couple more years. Deafening silence amongst the fans. The fans are going to start walking out before Michael Chandler even gets his hand raised because people are going to be like, fuck, dude. All of that buildup, a year of tough promotion, a year of trash talk. People saying, Connor might have it. Connor, Luke Thomas saying, you know, I like Connor McGregor's chances just for him to get blitzkrieged, KO'd in the first or second round. For his leg to give out again, Michael Chandler kicks him with two hard leg kicks, and it's all going downhill from there. And that's it. Connor comes back one more time. You think he's going to want to turn around after a year? Dude, a year for Connor McGregor is like an average person's six month layoff in the UFC after losing. And dude, I'd rather see him get a win. This is Connor McGregor's second to last fight ever. I've been saying it. If Connor comes back and loses, congratulations. We won't see him for another two or three years. He won't have his confidence. He'll come back as like a 38-year-old man again, and he'll probably lose that one too. And goodbye, Conor McGregor. He retires in the cage. At least we'll get to see loads of content. I know that Conor McGregor is going to go into this tough experience, you know, like I've done it all before. I'm the man. I got nothing to prove. I'm Mr. Humble. I'm just the big time coach. Everyone big times me. Michael Chandler is glazing me everywhere I go, constantly meat riding me. And within a week or two, he's going to start going crazy because this is just Conor McGregor's playhouse. I know he's going to come in here buttoned up like the nice McGregor that we saw on fight week when he fought Dustin in Abu Dhabi with the glasses on looking innocent like Spongebob fucking like like Spongebob circle pants, bro. The Spongebob that's just like this and the memes. Conor McGregor is going to come back looking like an angel and within a week like you're gonna see a promo after the first episode next week you're a fucking i've been having bootstraps on your little weasel mate connor <laughs> look at this guy connor <laughs> connor this is why we love connor this is great this is why we love connor mcgregor um great guy either way it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. The Ultimate Fighter is a dying show. The last time we had an Ultimate Fighter, it was Juliana Pena versus Amanda Nunes. And there was just no way I'm fucking watching that. Even when we had Volkanovski and Ortega, I watched one and a half episodes max. I watched some of the fights, but it was just unbearable. What was the point? These guys 
don't have the personalities that are meant for an ultimate fighter. You need the rampage breaking the door scenes. And that's why Conor McGregor is perfect. But man, they could have just given him Tony. Imagine the legendary lines that we would have gotten from Tony. Tony would have been on his loony time and Conor McGregor would be on his fucking madman shit, you know? And that's just the perfect mix. And at the end of it, you at least get to see a Conor McGregor win. You get to see him back in the win column. Fuck, Paddy Pimblett. Where's Pimblett at? Everyone wants to see Pimblett lose. That's the elephant in the room. The fans hate Paddy Pimblett at this point. They just want to see him lose. And everyone wants to see Conor win. Unless you're one of these haters that's coping with some shit and you just can't stand big stars in the UFC. You can't stand the UFC actually doing well. You're one of these guys that's just too hardcore for everyone. Bro, like you should want Conor to win. And getting him a win over Paddy Pimblett, who is a big name at this point in time, that's big. Conor McGregor knocking out a young guy, calling it a tune-up fight. What we're going to see in the cage when Conor McGregor fights Michael Chandler is we're going to see an old man falling apart before our eyes. This guy has had so many layoffs and this is not new. This is what Conor McGregor was doing before the Dustin Poirier rematch. This is what he was doing before Donald Cerrone. This is what he was doing before Habib and after Habib. The guy's retired like a few times. He's taken these multi-year layoffs as it seems. And Michael Chandler is a freak athlete. This guy, as I said, has like the black Air Force energy in the fucking gym. He's on demon time. He's an explosive juggernaut. I understand he doesn't have the best chin that there is, but Conor McGregor's not cracking like he used to. Sure, he stung Dustin with a couple of good shots in the rematch. He got dusted up, bro. He got destroyed. Like, he got finished in under two rounds in a striking match. Welcome to the calf kicks. And we saw his egg his leg, not his fucking egg. We saw his leg elevated on his yacht. His leg was fucked. This is not the first time we've seen his leg get injured in the last fight where it snapped. His leg has been going through lots of trauma recently. He's been getting injured. And that's why I say he's like TJ Dillashaw at this point. I'm not only worried about Conor McGregor's legs getting kicked. I'm worried about if his leg kicks get checked. What happens if he's throwing leg kicks and his body just can't withstand it? The guy's legs are compromised. He's not as slick as he used to be. He's not as fast as he used to be. And all that weight training, all that juicing in the off season, like that's not going to do him any good when he gets in the cage. I'm sure he's going to have to go through USADA. I don't know if the UFC is going to let him fight juiced up like they did with Brock back in the day, but that's just going to slow him down and make him stiffer. And we've seen Conor McGregor come back with that old boxing stance that he had since the Mayweather fight. And it just isn't doing him favors, especially when he's stiffer, especially when he's not as durable, especially when this guy's not grinding in the gym. Michael Chandler has a reason to grind. How hard do you think this guy's going to be working in the gym to face Conor McGregor? He's going to have all the motivational semi-Christian like, you know, fucking speeches going on. He's going to have all the fucking self-help shit going on. And that's going to boost Michael Chandler's thing. He's going to be going those family prayers with his family, dude, in the circle. Kumbaya. Michael Chandler is going to take himself to the next level. This is really where Chandler thrives. He's going to knock him out, bro. He's going to knock him out. And even if he has the worst fight IQ in the UFC, which he does, he's still a ranked UFC lightweight. Conor McGregor is going to get destroyed by anyone that's ranked. He breaks when he gets pressured, man. When this guy is getting teed off on, it just takes a couple of good shots to really put him out of there at this point. He's not good as the nail. This is not the same guy. And every single six months that he's in the Dominican, eating ice cream cones on his Instagram live after smoking a big blunt, you know, after a long day of shooting at the movies or coming home from the gym after fighting some high schooler that's just a, you know, a, a bigger kickboxer from the cardio kickboxing classes and going to the Black Forge Inn to brag about how, how jacked he is. This is not a Conor McGregor that is going to be able to compete with a high level, highly motivated, black Air Force energy Michael Chandler who's training on demon time in the gym when he's lifting weights, bro. Michael Chandler, all that lifting shit, that does wonders for his style. He's the explosive guy. He's like, he, he closes the distance like a Yoel Romero in that division. Sure. He's a little sloppy, but you guys are acting like Conor McGregor is going to be going into this like he was against the Eddie Alvarez, keeping Michael Chandler at distance, like these big, short, stocky, big punchers that just fall right into Conor's game plan. Conor McGregor is that guy. He's like the slow, stiff, big power puncher at this point in his career. 
he's not as fast as he used to be without the motivation to train this guy's not waking up and getting his fucking face dirty in the coal mines bro he doesn't want to put the hard hat on he wants to go in with the easy rounds he doesn't want to get humbled in the gym he's fucked bro michael chandler's gonna destroy him and it's gonna show you guys the difference between a ranked UFC fighter that actually takes their career seriously despite not having the best fight IQ and a guy that is so far removed from the lifestyle of a cage fighter. It's going to be fun, man. It's going to be fun. But I'm telling you guys, Michael Chandler is going to land a big shot on Conor McGregor and he's going to be thinking about how his yacht is outside and how, bro, like, it's, I'm kind of getting tired, man. Like, I got the yacht, bro. I got all the babes, dude. I forget about it after a long night, bro. Everyone still thinks I'm the boss. Go to the Black Forge Inn like I own the place. You know, he has an out. He has an out. Michael Chandler knows he loses. He doesn't get that second half of the paycheck. That second half of the paycheck to Michael Chandler, the win money, that's huge. That's massive. That could change his life a little bit. You know, Conor McGregor's win money... Dude, he'll shit that out on the on the daily, bro. So he doesn't care about that. He's not training for the fucking money at this point. He's training to come back. And I just think that his ego is too big because he could have been set up with a unranked guy like Patty Pimblett. Get a win over him and then fight Michael Chandler, bro. Then do tough with Chandler. Why do you have to do tough in May? Fuck tough in May. Do it in the winter. If he gets KO'd, he's not going to come back until he's like 37, probably. He'll go on another long vacation. He'll do another movie. He'll be even more batshit crazy because of the damage that he's taking, the brain damage. And then congrats, we have a 37-year-old Conor McGregor coming back to fight some other old guy who's a legend. And that will probably be his last fight. Because he's not going to come back six months after he loses to Michael Chandler. We're not going to be sitting here and saying, okay, Conor lost. Like, what's next for him? There's nothing next for him unless he decides to come back in multiple years. And that'll be his last UFC fight. I just think if you're going to have him on tough, bro, at least... Do it later with a Michael Chandler, bro. And have him a tune-up fight. Get him a tune-up fight. Because it'd be bigger to see Connor win, then do tough. Then fight Chandler. You can do it all. You could do it all. You can get Connor a win. I just don't think this is Connor's way to get a win. He's so fragile at this point in his career, bro. He's so fragile. And I like Connor, but this is not the same guy. Ah, bro. Yeah. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time. And that's the issue. All the processed foods that you guys are eating that kill your testosterone, that kills your balls, it's gonna get in the way of your hormones, which ultimately it's gonna make you feel like you have no energy. And also it's gonna get in the way of your mental clarity. So you put a bunch of fucking crispy bites and sodas into your body. Your body doesn't know what to do with it. In my cookbook, you have all these recipes that are composed of good, whole, traditional, unprocessed foods that are good for your hormones, that are good for your testosterone, that are good for performance in the gym.